Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm doing a video for you on flight conditions and flight conditions with a dual rate that overrides part of the condition. And this is a question I've recently been asked on my YouTube channel, so it's in response to that. So we're gonna be using the Futaba T26SZ for this setup, but don't worry if you haven't got this transmitter, the principle is exactly the same on other transmitters. If you are flying with Futaba, it'll be exactly the same on this set, obviously, but also on the T16IZ, T16IZ Super, and the T18SZ as well, because they run the same software. If you're on the T18MZ or T32MZ, then the principle is very similar. Software is very similar, but very slightly different. We should be able to follow along regardless. So let's talk about why. So in all of my models, I always set up two conditions. And last time I showed some of this, someone replied and said, you could do all that just using jaw rates to a single switch. But I use conditions, and the reason why I use conditions is because I want to override some of it with a jaw rate, in particularly for the rudder. So let me explain. So my first condition I normally call normal, norm, or sometimes I may call it F3A. So it's basically it's minimal controls because I want to do smooth flying. So minimal elevator, aileron rudder with probably about 15 to 20% expo in it, depending on the model. So I can just take off and fly smoothly. And that would be my normal condition that I'll probably do the majority of the flights in. And then I'll have another condition, which is normally called 3D, which will give me a lot more throws on all the control surfaces. Now, during any one of those conditions, I'll have a dual rate switch, which overrides and gives me full control on the rudder. So full movement on the rudder, in other words. So if I'm in the normal condition, I can just flick a switch and I'll get maximum movement on the rudder. And the reason why I have that is to help with stall turns. So when you're going up, all of a sudden I want more rudder movement to bring, make sure it stalls nicely down on the, on the same line back down and also for knife edge loops. I wanna be flying around nice and smooth in my normal condition, throw it into a knife edge, sorry, flick the jaw rate on first, throw it into a knife edge and make sure I've got enough rudder to go all the way around the loop and of course plow at the bottom on the same line without going into my 3D condition because I still want to keep things as smooth as possible around that loop. So for some maneuvers, it really helps. So that's the setup we're gonna be going through. So our starting point for this video is gonna be a model that's already flown but doesn't have any conditions configured at the moment. So it's just been flown, everything's been set up, it's trimmed out, it's balanced, but there's no conditions in there already. So we're gonna start off with that. But don't worry if you've already got models that have got multiple conditions on them ready and you want to follow along, I'll cover that towards the end of the video as to how to apply this jaw right override back through to all of those conditions individually. And I'll also put links in the description below if you wanna go and jump ahead to that chapter marker just to see that part of the video. Right, let's get a model and get the transmitter turned on. Okay, so here we go with the T26 and we've got the edge loaded up at the moment. And as you can see, it's got the default condition one, which is what all model setups come with, but nothing's really configured as far as the condition is concerned. If we just go into AFR, and what channel we're on, A on at the moment, you can see that all I've done is I've just dialed down some of my rates. So I've got 75 with 40 percent XO on this model. Elevator, probably something similar, 50 and 40. And then let's check the rudder as well for completeness. On the rudder, I've got 60 and 40, and there's no conditions configured. So if we're just going to check that, come back out, and we're going to condition select, you can see I've just got condition. So let's presume that I'm happy with how this model is currently flying, and we'll call this normal. So let's go ahead and rename it. I'm just going to call that norm. And then what I want to do first, before I go and copy any more conditions or create more conditions, I want to go and set up that jaw rate override. So if we go into jaw rate and we go and select the rudder. So I'm actually going to do this on this switch, SC. So let's go down to here. And on this transmitter, I can just move the switch so it selects it. So I'm going to have it so that it's actually off at the bottom so nothing's happening and then on as it goes up. Come out of that screen, come out of that screen and I want to actually activate it as well. So currently it's off if the switch is down. You see now the switch is in either position 
top two positions it's on as well i know it's a three-way switch i only need two of the positions but i've just left it so i can go to either but off for me so if the forward switch position is always off for me in everything that i do so it's easy for me to check the transmitter everything should be down before i start flying so that is the jaw rate configured but let's go and do something with that jaw rate so if we go back into afr and make sure we're on the rudder channel which we are afr rudder you can see if i flick the jaw rate on now you get d slash r3 so it's dual rate three on the rudder and you see it's changed so that is already active so that's just really basically a normal jaw rate so let's go and change this let's give us um i can keep on 100 we're going to add some extra expo in okay i would test fly this and then fine tune it let's just give me 55 it's negative expo on a few tarba set don't put positive in and there you go you can see it now changing between the two so we're still on the normal condition but this is just normal afr and this is the jaw rate applied now if i go and copy that condition it'll bring everything across including that jaw rate so let's copy it you can't just press copy on the futaba before it's add first to add a condition slot condition two and then we can do a copy we want to copy our source condition as our normal the one that we've just configured into a destination condition which is our new empty slot of condition two hit copy and then that's going to bring all the configuration across from the first condition which we've called normal into the empty slot of condition two if we go back to condition two always like to rename that and just for fun let's call this one 3d so this is going to give me more control now if i do a third condition i may well call it 3d max which would be the controls at their full limits which can be useful for some maneuvers i might do that in a minute just to show you but now we've got a condition named here so these now are currently exactly the same i want to assign the condition to a switch so i can turn it on and off while we're flying and i always use the same switch which again if i flick it is sb and i want it off at the bottom and then on at the top now if i was using three conditions which i will do shortly this switch configuration will change but you can already see it's in normal at the moment let's come out of that page if i go up to any of the two other positions it goes to 3d let's go and have a look what's happening in afr so we've got normal and if we go to 3d nothing should change because we copied that whole condition which is great because it means we've got all our settings now across all our channels that we've pre-configured However, if we throw in the jaw rate, it's still working for us. So I get more movement. So in this 3D condition, let's just go and set up some extra movement so we can see the changes between the two. And I'll show you this working on the model shortly. Now, a couple of things you need to do here. Let's first work through logically. So let's select channel one, which is Adon to start off with. What you want to do is actually make sure on page two that you're not grouping. So if you're grouping this function across all conditions, it'll make this, it'll change the settings across all the conditions. So I ungroup, go back here, and now I can change the settings individually. But you need to make sure your switch is in the right place and you're in the right condition at top before you make changes. So normal, 3D. Let's go back to 3D and let's up the rates. Let's give me 100. 100. Tweak in a bit more expo. Again, I will fly this and see what it's like. And now if I come off that screen, just so you can see the... So I go back to this screen, you can see I'm on 3D and I've got 100, 100. If I flick over, you can see it's now changing between the two. Okay, that's normal condition. Again, you could do this so far just on a draw rate. But let's not confuse things, let's stick to conditions. I'll go ahead and quickly do that for the elevator and rudder as well.
and there we go. So now you can see that I have two conditions set up, normal and 3D, and the 3D gives me more movement across the control surfaces. However, I've still got this jaw rate override. So we're on the rider at the moment. If I'm in normal, we've seen this already, we can override. If I'm in 3D, I can override as well. And it's as simple as that. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. It makes it much easier if you can configure the draw rate on your first condition and then copy the condition because it comes across. Now, if you haven't done that, and let's demonstrate this by doing a new condition. So let's just add a new condition, slot three, move the priority down. Let's call this a test condition. So I'm going to delete it afterwards. assign the switch to it as well. Just use the same switch to make things easier for my little brain. SB, um, I want that off, off. Just took me a second there to get my switch working correctly because you have to configure the switch in both of those conditions for it to work, which can be a little bit confusing. So let me just show you it working on norm. Now we're on 3D in position two and we're in test on position three. So for me as I go through the switch, push the switch away, it goes to each of those. So the easiest way for me to set the switch, obviously there's no configuration on normal, because that's default. So if you click the switch next to 3D and go into switch configuration and set, you can see that I only want the 3D on when it's in the middle. Now I don't know why it's just defaulted back to on there because that is wrong. That's showing me where the switch is at the moment, but that's really where it wants to be on. So be warned that if you're moving the switch around while you're in this screen, it can change your configuration. But for me, I only want 3D on when the switch is in the middle. And then on the other test condition, let's go back in here, go to the configuration. You can see it's changed again, but I only want the test on when it's in the top condition, so on, off, off is correct because the other two conditions are using the other position on the switch. Play around with it, but be warned that if you change this position while you're in this page, it will change these options here, which can be a little bit confusing. Come back out of this screen and then just make sure you're in the right things. A test, 3D, normal. Okay. So let's go back to where we are. So what we're seeing now is I didn't copy the condition. I didn't copy the norm or the 3D condition over to test. Normally what I would do is I would copy the 3D condition over the top of a new condition, call it 3D max, and then max out all the movements and that would give me my three conditions. But I just want to show you the point here. So if I go to 3D, it's working. Okay, I've just spent a few minutes messing around off camera because I think I think I've just found a bug in the software because it's not doing what I expect it to do. Normally when you create a new condition, which we call test, and you don't copy the contents of another condition over the top, it should default to no settings. So everything would be on 100, 100, 0, 0. But if I go to my test condition, which is brand new, you can see it's actually copied one of the other conditions. It's copied, it's copied the normal condition. Something weird going on there with the software. And I've done this a couple of times over. Condition select. Let's rem let's delete this. Am I going mad, guys? Just put a comment down below. Add a new condition. Let's set something that's never been used. Condition eight. Okay. Set the switch. I want it on when the switch is at the top. Exit. I've not done a copy, have I? It's just normal 3D condition. It's almost like it's inheriting the settings, but it shouldn't do, so I've not copied anything over. Let's come back out. Let's go to AFR. Let's pick a channel where it's easier to see. Aderons. Back in AFR. So I'm on condition eight. And why, why has it got settings there? It's got 75, 75, 40, 40. On my other transmitters, I'm sure that will just default back to nothing because we haven't copied the condition over the top. God, stuff like this frustrates me. Normal, 3D, condition eight. It's copying the normal. Why? 
please someone tell me why maybe there is a logical answer for this I'm not grouped I'm on the aileron da -da -da -da. that's separate no so what I was going to say is if you then have your new condition condition 8 in this case everything will be back to 100 100 0 0 which is why it's better to copy things across let's go just to see what's done for the rudder that'll be interesting sort of so go to test has it got the draw right yeah it has as well look so even though i didn't copy anything over in those conditions it's picked up the normal i don't think that's right guys let's be honest with you i know there's no software updates out for this transmitter at the moment it's brand new i'm tempted just to quickly go and try this on another set yeah let's do that it'll take two seconds okay different transmitter t18sz here's our baseline brand new model I've set up AFR for the ailerons, reducing movement under normal. I've copied normal to 3D and increased AFR for ailerons, signed the same switch, and that's currently working. So I'm now back at this stage. Let's add our third condition in. So it's the same switch. On this one, you have to press the button, hit set, and I want it so when the switch is at the top, that condition is on. There we go, so normal, 3D, on. Now when I go to AFR, I'm expecting to see everything defaulted because I haven't copied any of those conditions over the top of my new condition. AFR, normal, 80, 3D, that's the wrong way around, but you get the point, 3D, 50. It's doing the same. That's changed, at some point that's changed. They never used to do that. Why? why? Why is that doing that? I think that's wrong behavior. Guys, please add your thoughts down below. Because if it's copying one of these, it's like it's taking the baseline from what everyone's at the top, what's normal, and automatically applying that to condition three, which you may not always want. Or do you want that? No, I don't think you do want that. Because otherwise you just go back through and reverse stuff out. I think I would want a blank condition, and that's what the copy function's for. If I wanted normal into condition three, I'd copy it. I want a blank condition. Guys, give me your thoughts on that. Am I going mad or is that just a little bit quirky? But let's get back to the main video. Okay, I've swapped transmitters, gone back to the original plan here. Sorry if that just got a little bit confusing, but as you can see, I was confused as the behavior. I don't think it's quite right. But let's go into condition select, show you what I've got. I've got normal, 3D, 3D max, all on the same switch. You can see it change, normal, 3D, 3D max. If we go into AFR, we're on channel aileron, start off with that one. Normal, 7540, 3D, 150, 3D max, 110, 60. Okay, that's working as expected, just give me more movement. Now that is fine. Let's go back and select our rudder, which is where we have the jaw rate override on. And we can see that currently, just using the conditions, normal, 3555, 4060, 4585, give me more more rudder. However, if I'm in normal and I flick on the rudder draw rate, it jumps straight to 5500. Even if I change conditions now, we're still in the same settings. And that's it, it's as simple as that. Now, if that's not working for you, you've either got the switch configured incorrectly for the draw rate, or if you go back to draw rate, you might not have this configured under the condition. So for example, if I'm on 3D Max and I accidentally have this not in hit, inhibited, no, I have it, sorry. For, for example, if I go to 3D Max and I turn this one off, like this, so it's not activated, now, if I come out of this, go back to normal, go back into AFR, we're on the rudder still, let's turn the draw rate switch on, you can see it's working at the moment on normal. It's working on 3D. On 3D Max, it's not working because on that condition, the draw rate switch is not activated. So bit bear that in mind, the draw rate switches are part of the flight condition and therefore saved for each flight condition. Okay, hopefully I've not confused you guys. I might actually write an article on this and put it on my 
my website. If I do, I'll add that to the description of this video for you. But let's go and see this actually working on a model. Okay, so I have my OMP Hobby Edge on the bench. Um, before anybody says anything, the motor is off. I've just plugged a receiver pack directly into the receiver, so the flight batteries aren't actually in there at the moment, so there's no risk of me knocking the throttle, just for a bit of safety as I'm in the workshop. Let me just show you the conditions working. So on normal at the moment, if I hold everything over, including the rudder, so you can see it, and then flick between the condition switch, you should see everything start increasing. There we go, maximum movement. Now what you should do, obviously before just randomly changing the settings, you should actually have the model on to make sure you're not straining the servos. I've just thrown in some numbers there. I mean, I'm not sure if the add-ons can actually go to 110. It looks like they can. I'd actually check all underneath, check the linkages and to make sure I'm not straining that servo too much. Um, but let's go back to see that rudder override work. So now on normal condition, and I'm just gonna throw the rudder jaw right. There we go, bang, it's over. Come off of that into the 3D condition, rudder jaw rate, override, bang, it's on. Let's move that slightly over because it's hitting my computer. So again, we're back on the 3D condition, rudder override, 3D max. We still get a bit of extra rudder. There you go, rudder override, you can just see it moving. noisy servos okay so that is it working but I've got one more tip for you before you disappear and that is if you have a transmitter that supports speech you can go ahead and set up speech on these different switches so you know what's going on while you're in the air and I'll show you how to do that quickly now on the T26 it's exactly the same on the T16 I said and the T16 I said super as well but unfortunately the T18 S said doesn't support speech don't get me started so let's just quickly set up speech on this transmitter Okay, so let's go ahead and set up some speech to make it easy to know what condition we're in and whether we've got our jaw rate activated. So linkage, page two, sound select. And the switches I've got configured are SB, which is here. And you see, as I change the position, it changes the slot. So for, for example, I'm on normal at the moment, so I want to go and set normal. And then here's all the preset voices commands that I can use for this normal. So see if there's something appropriate. And this is kind of, I've given you type of feedback on this before. I like this feature. I like the ability that you've got these presets, but also want to easily add my own voice commands as well. And you can't do that on the T26 or the T16. Now on the T32MZ, they've gone the other way. You don't have any preset commands, but you can add your own voice commands, although it's not easy. I digress, let's find something. None of those. None of those. High gain, high gain rates. Mm, don't really like that. Low gain, I suppose I could do low, high, doesn't really work for me. Low rates, middle gain. Mm. Low, high, and middle is probably the closest I'm going to get to my conditions, which quite frankly makes me sad. Okay. But let's do it, because we've got to move on. working. Now our other switch is SC, which also happens to be on the same page. So let's see if we can find something applicable for the rudder. Hopefully if we go to R. Don't know my alphabet. There we go. Rudder. There we go. That's cool. Rudder low. See, see what I mean? So sometimes they've got what you want. Other times you just have to kind of make do, but I don't want to make do. And I'm also going to set rudder high on the last one as well. Rudder high. So now we've got. Middle game. Rudder high. And that just makes Middle things game. Rudder low. easier. Right, let's conclude.
So there we go, conditions with the dual rate override. Three conditions, and at any point I can flick another switch and get maximum movement on a different control surface, regardless of what condition I'm in. So it's like the draw rate is overriding the condition setting, which I think is a great feature. Now look, I'm sorry I went off on a little bit of a rant a couple of times there, especially the behavior around that new condition not being blank. Really don't know why that is, so if you do know, please let me know. But overall, that's some great functionality there, so hopefully that video's helped you guys out as well. If there's anything else you wanna see on the T26 setup or in Futaba setups in general, uh, I'm more than happy to help or either work out how to do it myself or if I'm doing it already, I'm happy to share that with you. So please let me know down below in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe, please. That really helps my channel. If you like the video, if you add a comment, it helps the channel as well. And of course, if you subscribe and hit the notification bell, then you get to find out when the next video is coming out. And at the moment, I'm releasing videos weekly, sometimes several in a week. So guys, hope to see you next time around.